What's up, people? Welcome back. I'll let you guys try to guess uh, where I am right now geographically. If anybody can guess correctly in the comments, I'll, uh, I don't know, maybe email you some feed pics or something. We're back in one of my absolute favorite places on Earth. Uh, this is kind of like the location that this whole YouTube thing kind of began on the Ask Beats channel. Now, as you can see, it is absolutely blizzarding out and we're kind of snowed in, unable to do much. But as soon as this mess ends, we are going to be out there after those big mom lake trouts that you guys all love so much. So stick around. We're going to get after it once this weather chills. See you on the ice. All right, so it is officially tomorrow. It is the day after that little intro was filmed. As you can see, the blizzard has completely stopped now. It's nice and calm, still super cold, but uh, this is definitely, definitely manageable. As you can see behind me, the northern lights are poking out and just south of that, you can see a storage box that I built a couple of years ago to just like store random goods. And there is some stuff in there that we need. Now I checked it out just before I started filming this video and it is full of hard packed snow. Like if you were to remove the walls and lid of the box, it would be a perfectly formed snow block in a rectangular form. So we're definitely gonna have to dig that out. So I'm gonna leave the camera rolling, maybe get a little time lapse of uh, me struggling through digging this out and maybe get some Northern Lights in the background. So let's get it. All right, let's see what we got. See, that's a little snow packed. Oh, this lid's heavy. I don't know how far these hinges go back. This might break. Ooh. All right, let's get shoveling, I guess. Holy fuck. Look at those northern lights, dude. That's wild. All right, we found what we're looking for. Sweet, sweet compressed gold propane the stuff up here is not cheap but it is so necessary because it's so cold i think i pay like 130 dollars per 20 pounder so we're uh we're scavenging using every last drop out of these leftover tanks here oh that was hard work so i'm gonna go get things packed up but uh that's it for now we will uh, see you on the ice <laughs> All right, so we are dropped off in the middle of nowhere. We are all alone. Forecast didn't call for exactly what we're seeing right now. This is a little bit freaking gnarly. It's not horrifically cold. It's quite cold, but not horrifically cold. And we can deal with quite cold, but not so much horrifically cold. So we'd be all right. So what we have here is a big point. It's called Nabutua. This is the spot that I've caught like most of the fish on ridiculous items. There's just usually abundance of fish here and lots of bait. So it's a really good spot for big hungry dumb fish. Now I'm just gonna use the old active captain here. This is all stuff that I've charted over my years in Baker Lake. Just trying to get kind of where the edge of that point sort of drops. Okay, well, we are pretty well where I'd like to be. You can see the ice is really, really janky here. I just wanna pull the shack to a flat spot so we can get this shack nice and flat so we can shovel snow around the skirt and stay warm. Cause it's hella windy and we're gonna need to preserve as much heat as we can. All right, we better get the support poles in because it is f***ing gross outside. And I don't want to run into any like severe problems today, especially given the fact that we don't have a ride home until later. And look at that f***ing rod got stuck. Oh boy, my life's a mess. Deadly out here. This place ain't for the faint of heart. So I had a little issue yesterday. I came out uh, just like in the afternoon, tried to do a quick little fish. I thought the propane was frozen. Had a couple uh, mild explosions because I thought the propane was like backing up because it was uh, cold. But what actually happened was in the transport out in the sleigh, I had some like sandy snow. So I guess what happened was some like sandy, snowy muck got in the pilot light hole and I just cleaned it out and now the heater's working a thousand times better. So it's like a little lesson learned there. Always clean your hole. Just gonna get a couple of holes punched and then we are in business. So there's about like, I don't know, maybe two feet of ice already here in Baker Lake. And it's hard to drill through that much ice when you're in reverse, of course. I can't believe how effing smooth this ion is. So we brought just the flasher, the OG real-time sonar. And the reason for that is like, look how little and compact that little petite unit is. Now, there are no roads that travel to Nunavut, so all travel up here is done via airplane. So we have to pack very, very light. And now this little flasher probably weighs an eighth of the amount 
that the Panoptics weighs. It looks like there's a fish already on the bottom. And I'm gonna get it set up so you can see that too. So please bear with me. Okay, we're pretty much set up. All I gotta do is get the camera on the Markham. Oh, it should be golden, baby. Baby, baby. Okay, that's going. We're set up, we're done. That's it, we're good. I guess I should probably get this uh, poop jig unstuck from my little basket thing here, whatever you call this Oh my God, every trouble point is stuck in there. We're cutting that. Okay, we're good. Well, this feels like a victory already. Came out here yesterday, tried to get like a short little afternoon fish in, but everything went wrong. Heater wouldn't work, it blew up twice. Uh, just, just no good business. So today, setup was actually fairly smooth and painless. Usually it's a lot worse than this. So maybe the fish gods do balance out the karma in the end. To the victor, go the spoils. Ice cold, Pepsi. Now let's catch some big mamas. Now it's bloody gnarly outside. Plus the ice conditions are terrible, so dragging a sleigh across the ice isn't really ideal. So we set up kind of like, not directly on the waypoints that I've done super well, but we're pretty damn close. We're set up like right towards the end of the drop off a big steep point, kind of like towards the end where the drop kind of starts tapering off. I've already seen a bunch of bait up high. If you watch the screen on the Markham, you'll see lots of little things flicker through periodically. This stretch of shoreline here, for about a kilometer across, there is just like infinite Cisco's, which is absolutely why there's so many crazy hungry lake trout here. So it's like, it's around like 45 feet deep here. Now it comes up super quick onto this point. We're in deep enough water that like you realistically need to be checking the column all the time for lake trout because they can come in anywhere. I don't know how many times I've caught lake trout directly under the ice and then drop back down after and caught one directly off the bottom. So like it's not like they're, you know, stuck to any portion of the water column. They're anywhere that the food is and these Cisco's kind of show up everywhere. Oh, there's a fish. Definitely a fish on down low. Now I don't know if that's bait fish or if that is a lake trout because it just flickered in oh yeah this, this looks like it's going to be a fish that'll bite watch this fish once it decides what it wants to do it's going to absolutely go berserk let's see if i can get him chasing he kind of wants to chase there we go it's gonna be the first laker of the year he just bumped it got him there we go boys first laker of the season it's doing crazy weird stuff i don't think it's very big oh uh, it's starting to show some power now It's not terrible, I don't think. It's starting to take a run, ooh. Just kind of bucking at the bottom of the hole. I didn't really do a good job of cleaning these holes out. There we go. It's not a bad, ah, it's a pretty bad one. Have a look at that, boys. I'm all tangled. Holy bro. First Laker of the season right there. Feels good, man. It's like a below average size Baker Lake Lake Trout. See you, sir. Okay, there it is. We're back out here on Baker Lake. I am so glad to be back here. It's been a while since I've been uh, ice fishing out here. For those of you that don't know, this is kind of where the whole YouTube thing started out. Like I moved up here in, I think it was 2019. Started, uh, started the YouTube channel on the back of being out in this remote, beautiful wilderness. And uh, it feels really, really good to be back. It's a good start. So the lure that that fish could not resist is right here. This is a new jigging spoon from Element Custom Baits called the Wingding. It's a nice little flutter spoon that also has these two little wings on the side. I've been messing around with it a little bit already this season and it looks absolutely spectacular in the water. And that fish just couldn't resist. I'm looking forward to using these for both big mamas and for walleyes as well. Let's get back down. something there give a weird reading there for a second it's also picking up the swivel if you're noticing that there's a second mark ahead i usually tie a line to line knot like the alberto knot but because we're using this crazy flutter spoon here's a fish i decided to put a swivel to connect the two lines together just so we don't get a lot of line twist i didn't use a swivel earlier this season while fishing walleyes using the spoon and the line got so twisted so when fishing flutter spoons make sure you're using a nice smooth swivel Oh, there's a fish. 
What is going on with this screen, though? You can still kind of see it. What the f is going on, bro? Why is this so f***ed up? It's right on it. There we go. Gain was too high. That looks like a bigger mark. Just switch it up to a white tube. That's the absolute staple lake trout bait. This fish is charged up. This might be a big one. It looks kind of big. And it's acting kind of big too. It's usually the smaller ones that are kind of like absolutely crazy and just crush it. Whereas the bigger ones will often show a little more tentativeness. Oh no. I think that fit. Oh, he's still there. He was chasing it down. Oh, he's getting charged up. He's going to bite right here. This is a better one. For sure, this is a better one. I think this is a better one. Felt better for a second. It's not really fighting now. Oh, doing crazy head shakes. Oh, it's crazy head shakes, dude. Scrapping right at the bottom of the hole. It's a better one for sure. That's a nice one, boys. Oh, that's a nice one. Yes, sir. Oh no, he swam into the deucer. Oh, that's bad. This is a super nice one, boys. I got a glimpse of his tail and it looks super nice. Oh, don't you love to hear it, boys? Oh, yes. Oh, I love to hear it. Jeez, why didn't I pull the deucer? Oh, no. It's super tangled in the deucer. It's not good at all, boys. No. Why does this have to happen? That's really bad. That's really, really bad. Really, really bad. Really, really bad. I gotta just horse him up, boys. This is not good. It's a nice fish, too, though. Oh, no. We gotta horse him. Come on. Okay. We're out of deucer cable. Come on. Okay, I guess we're pulling him up the deucer hole. There we go. No. Oh. This is a joke, dude. A joke. Okay, he's free from the deucer. Are you guys serious, man? Why does this stuff happened to me all the time. This is dumb. Okay, we're good. Man! Okay, I guess I had too much deucer cable out. Stupid. It's a super nice one, boys. That's a nice fish. Okay, I'm just gonna lip rip this guy. Just to make things a little easier. There we go, boys. There's the first nice laker of the season. It's maybe like a 33 incher, maybe. Have a look at that deadly Baker Lake Laker. So pretty. Look at those fins, man. Awesome. Get them back. Still charged up. There we go. Okay, so I just switched up to a white tube from the wing ding. I was having a hard time marking the wing ding because it's fluttering way off to the side, which isn't a bad thing, but there seems to be a ton of fish down there. And I want to kind of be able to see my bait at all times. I'm going to switch back and forth between the tube and the wing ding for sure. And I'm also going to shorten the transducer lead here because that was absolutely stupid. It could have been really bad. That fish could have cut the transducer cable and we could have been done for the day because ain't nobody fishing without sonar. We have a very short day only today. It's almost the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year. And up here around this time, the sun rises at just after 10 in the morning and sets before four. So very limited daylight hours. Oh, fish. Fish just cruised out of nowhere. What? This fish is charged, dude. This is gonna be a good fish too, I think. 
There, he lifted it. Crazy little fish, man. Oh, I pulled it out of his mouth. Stupid. He'll bite again. I have a feeling he's gonna bite again. Oh. Okay. These fish are nuts, man. He's gonna bite again, probably, too. There he is. He's gonna bite it right now. Swing and miss. I think he has it in his mouth. No? <laughs> there we go. Got him. <laughs> All right. The one nice thing, well, one of the nice things about fishing here in Nunavut, there's a lot of room for air. These fish are so charged up. That fish bit three times. I hooked them three times. Looks like an okay one. It's doing big head shaky things. It's not bad. We'll take that. Wow, this one didn't fight. There we go. Check that out. He's all charged up now because he didn't fight on the way up. <laughs> Look at that beauty. Deadly fish. Okay, let's get him back. Oh, my hands are cold. Okay, so that tube got a little mangled and uh, that's no discredit to the tube. That fish bit it like three or four times and probably like lashed onto the side of it and didn't get hooked the first couple times. So undoubtedly that tube's gonna get mangled up, but we're gonna switch to this. What we have here is a cougar baits. It's a nice little half ounce jig, some nice white. Come on, focus, stupid. Here we go. Some nice white and red fuzz and a nice little spinner at the bottom. These cougar baits are so freaking deadly. They're hand tied by my man's Max Kaufman. Now, they're definitely not gonna be the cheapest bait in your box, but it's evident as to why, because the, the workmanship on them is just incredible. They are so beautifully handcrafted, hand tied. Such nice patterns on them, nice combos of different hair. Hair jigs are a must have in any serious lake trout anglers arsenal. The nice thing about hair is that Unlike plastic, it's gonna take a lot of force to rip the hair off the hook because they're just so fastened to the jig head. Now, so often while lake trout fishing, you're gonna see stuff up high, whether it be bait or lake trout. And a lot of the times it may not like turn into something, but the one time that it does and it's huge, you're gonna thank yourself and you're gonna thank me because I'm the one telling you to. Oh, there's a fish. Ooh. That fish is gonna bite. He's so charged up and it looks nice size too. I think I just plopped it on his head. I felt it. There we go. He lifted it. Not too big, I don't think. Unless it's just not aware of its current predicament. I'm just gonna pull, ah, shoot. I'm gonna pull this out just in case because I don't want that to happen again. fighting so weird so you're not taking any sort of runs just kind of like dogging at the bottom of the hole doing circles scraping the braided line against the freaking sharp ice there it is nice little medium dark lake trout look at that guy stop 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 medium pretty as heck though Get back down. We need more. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna devote half the day to just having fun, playing around, make a separate video. I think we've got enough for a video now. Oh, there's a fish. And then I'm gonna make a separate video doing what we came here to do. So what we'll do is we're gonna catch one more fish and I think there's one right on this bait. Yep. We're gonna catch one more fish and then we're going to do what we came here to do and that is catch some fish on a ridiculous lure, which I will show you in the next video. So hang tight. We're going to catch this fish right now. And then we're going to switch. Warm up's over. Time to pull out the big guns, the heavy artilleries. 
just pounding the bottom right now. Sometimes these Lakers will want to just eat a bait directly off the bottom for some strange reason. Now you can't really see it on the fish finder because there is a dead zone, like I mentioned earlier, we're fishing on a slope. So the beam, as we know, shoots out into a cone. So part of the beam is catching the top of the slope and the other part is catching the bottom of the slope. So the width of the beam is interrupting the signal. So we're missing about, I don't know, maybe four feet or so of oh, fish. Fish all over it. Come on. Nope, didn't want Chase. Of course the GoPro dies. He nipped it. Now I'm gonna to try to change his GoPro battery while also attempting to entice this fish. I don't know where it is, the screen is looking gross. Oh, does he have it? Oh my lord. There we go, GoPro battery change. Look at that. Let's so you know you're a pro YouTube fisherman guy. When you could change a GoPro in the midst of trying to lure a lake trout, but I think I blew it. I hook. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, this fish is charged up. This is gonna bite. Oh man, that looks big too. Come on, got him. Oh, this feels bigger. It's doing crazy stuff. I gotta tighten this drag a little. It's coming up fast, but it feels big. Okay, man. Holy. That was so exciting. Sometimes when these lake trout come and bite, when you see them on the fish finder, it looks like it's like interference because like, when you're used to fishing walleyes, you're used to these dainty little fish that barely move. And these fish just cruise as you just seen. Or seen. Oh, he did a big head shake and I thought he got off, but he's still there. I don't know how big this is. It feels bigger than the last couple. But it's so weird because sometimes the biggest ones fight. Oh, geez, it's getting crazy stuff. This could be a really good one, I think. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. This could be the best of the day. It just has so much power. This rod here is the Timber Trophy. Heavy action. Oh, my goodness. Look at that run. This is a good fish. I'm excited. Heavy action rod, super nice bend to it. Listen to that drag, oh my goodness. This is gonna be big. It's just dogging me, it's right back down to the bottom. I'm gonna pull up this transducer because as we've seen, the last fish got tangled in it. Okay, this is making me nervous. <laughs> Man, I love Lake Trail. Listen to the drag just ripping. Holy! Just definitely not gonna force this fish because that is how bad things happen. Okay, GoPro still recording. Man, my arms are getting a little sore. This shack here's a little bit of a disaster. I have things everywhere, but that's par for the course. On brand. This thing's fighting so good. I hate it when it scrapes the bottom of the ice. These ion, the Ion Alpha cuts pretty darn smooth. Smoother than a lot of other brands that I've used, so it's less of a risk, but oh my god, do you hear that? Like, what is this? You guys, this is big. <laughs> oh boy, okay, well. I feel like this is a sign that we should use the heavy artillery lure next. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, boy. Oh, man, it's doing scary things. Oh, man, this is fighting so good. Look at those head shakes, dude. This is nuts. It's just so powerful. <laughs> I 
It's gotta be hooked good. He's taking some crazy runs, big head shakes. Oh man, this fish is fighting a lot harder than any fish I've fought in a while. He just ain't done. Oh, he's gotta be close. Oh. Just got a little glimpse of him, I think. Hard to see though. Oh man, this is scary. He's right at the hole. Oh, he's doing so much gross scraping stuff. Oh, please. I'll be so good to you, I promise. It's that like way off to the side. Oh man. There it is. Oh, that's a good one. Oh. Looks fat AF. It's right at the hole. There's his head. Oh, that's a super nice one. Oh, he's up. That's so big. Oh my god. Oh. Sheesh. Okay, well, that's the biggest fish of the day, and it ain't even close. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you love to see it. Y'all ready for this? Oh, baby. Have a look at that stud. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. What a start to the ice fishing lake trout season. This is probably a 40 incher or close. And look at that. There's that cougar bait stuck in his mouth. Absolutely deadly. Look at this thing. That is like a perfect specimen of a fish. That's so freaking nice. Oh, yes. Okay. It was not hooked that good. Ah. No, it really was not hooked very good. I just popped out. Okay, let's get this girl back. <laughs> Thank you for coming out, big mama. There she goes. All right, <laughs> that couldn't have worked out any better. I just said that we're gonna catch one more fish and then we're gonna switch to the heavy artillery. So we're gonna cut the video. That is such a good way to wrap this up. It's the biggest lake trout I've caught in uh, probably two seasons or so. We still got half a day left though. And uh, we've got some cool things planned. So I don't know what else there is to say, but uh, thank you guys all so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. I guess I'll give you a little sneak peek, a little hint of what's to be expected right there. Now, at first glance, that may look like a little something that you may find in uh, Anthe's top drawer, but that definitely ain't what it is. So stick around for the next video. Thanks, Anthe. Well, that was exhilarating. 